Hey, sis. So we are back with our second session of Flourish With Me Fridays. I am so excited. Hi, Taisha. Hey, girl. So I'm just giving everybody a second to tune in. Um, so for those of you who are joining me for the first time, thank you for giving me your time. Um, a couple of people that have really blessed me and encouraged me this week um, that I would love, love, love for you to follow and support. Um, number one, Brandy Coffee, who is the uh, creator of Candles and Conversations. Um, I was just on her show. It was amazing. She has a great layout plan for you guys. So if you could follow um, her YouTube page, Candles and Conversations. Also, Destiny Alexander, who does the vents. She's super dope. Follow her YouTube. She definitely is another source of encouragement. Um, Randy Mole. She has a podcast called Project 31, which definitely is a blessing. And then um, Keisha Penland, she has a um, group called Key to Success. So those are some of the people that encouraged me this week. So if you have time, when you have time, just make sure you follow them, keep up with them for um, other sources of encouragement. Again, I thank you if you are tuning in with me for the first time. If you are back again, I am so happy to have you. Um, I am just going to quickly open up with prayer and then we will get started. Um, so, Father God, I ask you and I um, ask you to use me, Father God, decrease me and increase you. God, I thank you for every viewer that is watching now and every viewer that will watch in the uh, moments to come, oh God. God, I ask that you show up, God. I ask that you show out, God. I ask that you meet them at their point of need, oh God. God, I ask that you give them a source of encouragement. God, I ask that something that I uh, say to them will stick with them, Father God, that will help them realize that they are kingdom shakers and glory carriers. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, um, my topic for today is called Watch Your Mouth. So, the Lord has been dealing with me in this situation. And to be honest, I did not even want to get on here and talk about it because I'm like, how is he going to check me like this and how I'm going to supposed to get on here and talk to y'all about it? But I'm being obedient. Um, I want to come at you from three aspects of Watch Your Mouth. The first one I want to talk about is Watch what you speak into your own atmosphere. Watch what you speak over yourself. Watch what you speak over your children. Because what the enemy likes to do is use our very own words against us. So he will come strategically listening, studying us. He is like, okay, let me let me see what makes Ari tick. Or let me see what makes Justin tick. Or let me see what makes Michael tick. And what he'll do is he will use our own words as a slingshot to puncture our purpose. So he's very, and he's patient. The, the enemy is patient. He does not look for a quick turnaround. So when he's coming to discourage you, he is literally waiting for the plan to unfold. So what he does is just let us sit back and discourage ourselves. I know personally for me, when I first started Black Sheep Beauty, there were so many times where I was like, I can't do this. I don't have no money. I, I don't know how to resources. Who Who's going to help me with this? I don't... I had to figure it out on my own and I didn't realize that I was poisoning my own atmosphere and giving the enemy leverage. So yeah, so he started attacking me like, no, you can't do it. Nobody wants to see your logo. Nobody cares what you have to say. Nobody wants to hear that poem. So be careful what you say over yourself and over your children. Even when you're talking to your children, um, Adonis made me realize something when we were doing his homework and he kept saying, I can't do this. And I'm like, what are you, stop saying you can't do it. Watch your mouth. And I think that's how God looks at us sometimes. He's like, I gave you something. I told you something specifically. And you are basically going against what I said by not believing what I'm saying. Watch your mouth. How dare you let the enemy get in your mind and tell you what you can and cannot do. So that was, he checked me real good. So don't let the enemy use your words as a slingshot to puncture your purpose. I'm going to say it again. Don't let the enemy use your own words as a slingshot to puncture your purpose. There is a um, scripture um, from Proverbs 18.21, the NLT version that says, The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. So... Like it says, the tongue can bring death. 
So you can literally speak over your situation and discourage yourself before you even have a chance to get started. God may have given you a great vision, but you walking around, oh, I'm broke, or I don't know how it's going to work, or I don't, are you, you, and then you get the question to God, like, God, you sure that's what you told me? Yes. But you are speaking into your atmosphere. You have the power and the authority to decree and declare things. So use that power. So watch your mouth. It is so easy for us to do it. I do it. I had to catch myself a lot of times. Um, the second aspect I want to come, which is really, really, really important to me, is watch who you tell your dreams to. So this goes for everybody. So if you have a business that you want to start, that you have birth, that you want to birth, that you have this great idea or you are um, in the midst of working on something, watch who you tell your dreams to because everybody, number one, is not happy for you and everyone is not qualified to even help you get to the goal. So why am I looking to you for validation when I need to be looking to God, because he's the one who birthed it in me anyway. So why am I going to go to you and ask you what you think about it or how you feel about it or, or what, what input you might have? You, you don't carry any weight in what God told me I'm going to do. So you have to watch who you tell your dreams to. When God gives you something, sometimes he don't want you to tell nobody. Sometimes it's between you and God. And sometimes he will put strategically um, place people in your life who are confident, who you can go to. But you will know those people because those will be the people who were there when you were down and out, when you didn't have anything, where you, they will help uplift you. Like, you know what? I do believe in you. You don't believe in yourself, but I believe in you or I see something in you. Those are the people, if you decide to, to open your mouth, talk to those people who will encourage you and push you that really want to see you win. Because I'm telling you, it's people going to be having a cheerleader going they're gonna be like yeah go but that undertone it don't be for you they be like your little business or your little idea or mm, that's cool or that's cute and you you be hurt because you be like you know i thought you was my a one day one i thought we was friends i thought you know if anybody was going to support me i thought it would be you and then you get discouraged because they're not supporting you to your expectations and that's not what god had for them to do anyway everybody is not conducive to your flourish everybody is not supposed to be on the next level that you're going to that's not for everybody and we get mad at it because we be like i mean we've been friends for 20 years okay and that's fine that's just not the capacity they can support you in so you really have to watch watch who you tell your dreams to um, I went to a spiritual warfare um, workshop and Pastor Kelker said something to me that like I'm telling you, I, I repeat it in my head every day. He said that God's job is to create. Our job as man is to come into agreement with that creation and the enemy's job is to challenge the creation. So the enemy will use the closest people to you to challenge the creation so you have to be aware of the language people use and you have to be aware of where you're supposed to go and who's supposed to be with you. So like I said, God's job is to create. So if God is creating something in you, you need to come into agreement. Don't get to questioning how, when, why, where. Shelbra um, on um, Candles and Conversation said, God gives us enough light for the step that we are on. So don't Look for people to support you. Look for God to support you. If God gave you something, that's all the support you need. He is not going to give you something and allow for you to fail. You have to be encouraged. And sometimes you have to encourage yourself. But I'm telling you, it, it, it he's, he's strategic. So you just got to watch the people that are in your circle. I don't care how long y'all been friends. I don't care how long you've been in this relationship. I don't care if you go to church with them. It doesn't matter. If God gave something to you, that does not mean that everybody is going to be happy for you because some people are jealous. Some people want to do what you're doing and they don't know how to express that. Instead of saying, well, you know what? I see you're doing this and I really would love to do that. Let me help you up and pull you to where I am or let me share you some of the hardships that I've had so you don't go that route. But everybody's not like that and you and you just you just got to be careful. Um, this verse that stuck out to me in Proverbs, the message version says, Smart people know how to hold their tongue. Their grandeur is to forgive and forget. 
Smart people hold their tongue, aka watch your mouth. Smart people watch your mouth. Because let me tell you, the enemy is going to get strategic. And when he hits you here and it don't bother you no more, he's going to hit you over here. He's going to hit you until he finds where you say, ouch. And it's usually with the people that are closest to you when you feel like you need them the most. But you, you, I'm telling you, when God gives you something, you move and you be obedient and you will be surprised just how much you can get accomplished and how God will bring people into your life intentionally at the very right moment. So don't get discouraged if you feel like, you know, your friends aren't there or your family, your family's not there. That's okay. Because I'm telling you at the right time, he's going to bring the right person to give you the right word to give you the right encouragement. So watch your mouth. You don't need their stamp of approval anyway. Um, the third aspect that checked me real good as well is watch how you respond to other people so basically jesus got tried so who are we to think that we won't get tried and we'll get tried in many different aspects and people will try to test our character they will try to knock us off our block they will come at us and we have done nothing wrong but it's all about how you choose to respond First of all, everything doesn't deserve a response. So watch them out. You don't even have to respond to negativity. You don't have to respond to what everybody says about you. People are going to talk about you whether you're doing everything right or doing everything wrong. It doesn't matter. People are always going to have your name in their mouth. And you were, my pastor says, you are always going to get more looks than you do likes. So do not, everything doesn't deserve a response. Now, like I said, Jesus got tried. And what I found amazing about this was because when we get tried, our first reaction is, who are they talking to? Or don't try me. I'm not the one. And I'm telling you, I am bad for that. I'd be like, I didn't do nothing to you. Don't come for me. I didn't sin for you. But that's not how people of God we are supposed to be. We are supposed to be people that are showing love even when love isn't shown to us. I don't ever want to be the reason why somebody says, see, that's why I don't go to church. Look at her acting a fool, cussing somebody out because she mad. That's not how you do it. So you really have to watch how you respond to people. Even when you're angry, you have to watch your mouth and watch your tongue. And you have to still be obedient and respond in love. So as I was reading and I was kind of studying, um, Jesus fasted for 40 days. So he was hungry. He was probably irritated. He was like, look, I done been through the struggle. And here come the enemy trying to provoke him, trying to get in his face and distract him. And he said, since you are God's son, speak a word that will turn these stones into loaves of bread. So now we know Jesus. He could have been big petty and he could have made 10,000 loaves of bread if he chose to. He could have been like, I'll turn you into a loaf of bread if I feel like it. But what he did was use the word of God as his defense. Instead of him trying to be boastful or be like, oh, I can do this. I mean, it's nothing. I'm, I'm Jesus. I can literally do it. Instead of him doing that, he said, I'm going to hit you with the word of God and let God check you. And he said, it says, Jesus replied, it takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from God's mouth. So he could have chose to easily say what he wanted to say or step in, but he chose to let God speak for him. The, the enemy didn't give up. He tried him two more times, but every time Jesus was like, and another one, and another one. Like he was so unbothered and he was so confident in the word of God that he literally was not able to be tempted. And we can do that. We have the power and the authority to do the same thing. People are going to come for us. They go come for our businesses. They go come for our children. The enemy is literally going to try to come for you every way possible. But you have to remember, don't let anybody blow your witness. You have been through hell and high water to get to be the person that you are now. So I will not let anybody come and shake me. And that's not saying that we're not human. We're, of course, we're going to be angry, but I don't have to give you the satisfaction or the power to hold over my head to make me that angry where I jump up out of my character. I can hit you with the word of God and keep it moving, or I can hit you with silence and keep it moving. Like there, you don't have to 
to give in to everything. You don't have to be provoked by everything and everyone because God has told us we have power and authority. So use that. And a lot of times we are praying for stuff that we already have. We're praying for peace or we're praying for God to do this or we're praying for strength. And we already have that. We just have to tap in to what we already have. So watch your mouth. If you don't take anything from this, when you go through the next week, because I'm telling you, you're going to be tested on your job. You're going to be tested at school. Your kids going to test you. And, it, and it's really, 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 it takes, you have to be intentional, intentional about what you are speaking into your atmosphere. You have to be intentional about choosing joy, about choosing peace, about choosing not to react, about choosing not to respond to certain things. Because God has you on a path and he is going to literally I'm telling you, the things that he's going to manifest is, is going to be amazing. And the enemy is mad. So he is going to try to knock you off and get you distracted any way that he can. And he does that by getting in our minds because it starts in your mind. The thoughts that are in your mind come out of your mouth. And those things that come out of your mouth become actions. So if you're angry, you're going to speak angry thoughts and you're going to react. And then by the time you react, you're going to regret it and you're not even going to be able to take it back. You're not going to be able to take it back at that point. So you have to think wisely. You have to trust God. You have to fight with the word of God because it's not even earthly people that we are fighting. We are fighting in the spirit realm and we have to be prepared for what the enemy is trying to do to us. He is trying to crush our dreams. He is trying to kill us and it's not going to work. God says we are already victorious. So with that being said, we, we have to walk around like we're victorious. We have to speak like we're victorious. We have to let the devil know, get under my feet. You're not winning today. You tried it. Good try. Good try. Not today. You have to let them know you are not to be played with. You are chosen to be in the kingdom of God for a reason. So I am not here before you long. I just wanted to, to vent out what I felt like was really, really um, a lesson that I learned because I literally had to let my flesh simmer down because I literally let some things get to me. And I was like, I have been so unbothered for so long. I could, I forgot that I could get so mad, but I was mad. And I had to really like, thank God for the people who um, have so much wisdom, who were able to pour into me and say, that's not you. That's not how you react. That's not what you do. You keep going and you keep doing what God calls you to do. And you watch your mouth every step of the way because when you start speaking positive things and you start thinking positive thoughts your actions are going to easily reflect it and it doesn't matter somebody could come be in your face and be going off and you're gonna you won't have such a peace and such a calm about you like amen god bless you i'm, I'm glad you feel that way amen we're gonna let let's pray like you really are going to be surprised how god will renew your mind and renew your strength and give you peace so if you take nothing away, watch your mouth. Watch what you speak over yourself. Watch who you tell your dreams to. And watch, watch, watch how you respond to other people. So I told y'all I had a quick word for y'all. I know it's Friday. I will be back in two weeks with a new topic with another Flourish With Me Friday. I thank you for tuning in if it's your first time. I appreciate you. Come back, come back, come back. So we are bi-weekly every Friday at 6.30. So I love y'all. Thank you.